Hey, shalom, brothers and sisters. I welcome you back. Hey, thanks again for joining me today. Today, I want to talk about, uh, and I also want to uh, pay homage and tribute to uh, Huldah, the prophetess. Uh, she was uh, lived during the reign of King Josiah, the king of uh, Judah. And I just want to read, uh, she's she not mentioned very much in the Old Testament scriptures, only in 2 Kings and 2 Chronicles. But I, I just want to read this to you. It's where, uh, <clears throat> as Josiah's reigning, he's got he's got some issues where he sends his uh, men over to inquire to the prophetess, inquire some some knowledge. And I'm gonna start out with Second uh, uh, Kings chapter uh, 22 verses 14 to 20. It says here, uh, so. Uh, Hilkiah the priest and uh, Ahiakim and uh, Achor and uh, Shaphan, Shaphan and uh, Ashabiath went unto Huldah the prophetess, the wife of uh, Shalom, the son of Tixva, uh, the son of the son of uh, Horus, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college, and they uh, communed with her. And she said unto them, Thus saith Yahweh, Elohim of Israel, Take the man that sent you to me. Thus saith Yahweh, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place, and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the book which the king of Judah has read. So the the book that they're talking about is is basically the the Torah. They uh, was going through the temple, cleaning out, doing some repairs to the temple, and uh, somebody found the found the book and they read it and then they sent it to the king, read it to him, and of course he was upset, ripped his uh, garments, repented, and wanted to do right in the eyes of Yahweh. So continuing on seventeen, because they have forsaken me and have burnt incense unto other mighty ones that they have, that they might provoke me to anger with the works of their hands. Uh, therefore, my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. To the king of Judah, which sent you to inquire of Yahweh, thus shall ye say to him, thus saith Yahweh Elohim of Israel, as touching the words which thou hast heard, because thine heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before Yahweh, when thou heardest what I spoke against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse, and has has rent his clothes and wept before me, I also have heard thee, saith Yahweh. Behold, therefore, I will gather thee unto the fathers, and thou shalt be gathered unto into the grave in peace. And thine eyes shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon this place. And they brought the king word again. So since uh, Josiah, he was righteous, and he's trying to do the best he can to restore the true religion back to the, the kingdom, Yahweh understood that, and he's going to have mercy on him, said, well, when you basically when you pass away, you're not going to see see what I'm going to do to these disobedient people. It's coming. It's coming real soon. Uh, now I'm going to go to Second uh, Chronicles. Basically the same the same story, but I just decided to read it anyways. But uh, right here, Second uh, Chronicles 34 and. Uh, says basically the same thing uh and uh Hilkiah and they that the king had appointed went to Huldah the prophetess the wife of Shalom and the son of Tikvath the son of uh, Harshra, Harshra, Harshra keeper of the wardrobe uh and she answered them thus saith Yahweh Elohim of Israel tell ye the man that sent you to me Thus saith Yahweh, Behold, I will bring evil upon the place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even 
all the curses that are written in the book which they have read before the king of Judah. Because they have forsaken me and have burnt incense and other mighty ones. They have they that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be poured out upon this place and shall not be quenched. And as for the king of Judah who sent you to inquire of Yahweh, so shall you say unto him, Thus saith Yahweh Elohim of Israel concerning the words which thou hast heard. Uh, because thine heart was tender, and thou didst humble thyself before Elohim, when thou heardest his words against the place of uh, and against the inhabitants thereof, and humblest, humblest thyself before me, and didst rend his clothes and weep before me, I have even heard there also, saith uh, Yahweh. Behold, I will gather thee to thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered to the grave in peace. Neither shall thy eye see all the evil that I will bring upon the place and upon the inhabitants of the same. So they brought the king word again. Then the king uh, sent and gathered together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of Yahweh, and all the men of Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and the priests, and the Levites, and all the people great and small, and he read to the, in their ears of the words of the book of the covenant that was found in the house of Yahweh. So he's re-educating the people. He brought everybody, everybody there to hear what he had to say. He was saying, this, this, is, this, is how, this is how it's supposed to be, and this is how it's going to be as long as I'm reigning as king here. Uh, and the king stood in his place and made a covenant before Yahweh to walk after Yahweh and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes, uh, which all his heart and with all his soul to perform the words of the covenant, which are written in this book. And he caused all that were present in Jerusalem and Benjamin to stand to it. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of Elohim, the Elohim of their fathers. And Josiah took away all the abominations out of all the countries that uh, pertain to the children of Israel and made all that were present in Israel to serve, even to serve Yahweh their Elohim. And all his days they departed not from following Yahweh, thy Elohim of their fathers. So it's, it's, it's a reform. He had a reform, and he went beyond just reform. Just He didn't just talk to talk. He walked to walk. He went around, and he started smashing these pagan high places and these idols and everything. Sometimes he even went sort of out of his jurisdiction to do it. He went up in the, the, the land of uh, the northern tribes. They, uh, they went up, he went up there and started bashing and tearing their places up, too, their pagan, pagan sites. And he... Uh, he stuck to his guns. He was one, one of the few righteous kings in Judah. Of course, you know, in the northern tribes, Israel, there was no good ones at all. None whatsoever. But there's only a few here and there that were righteous, like like him, like Hezekiah, uh, that, were, uh, that were sticking to their guns and sticking to righteousness and Yahweh. Uh, but this prophetess, you know, she they, they don't mention her very much, but I'm sure there's a lot of things uh, she did that was noteworthy. That's just not what's not mentioned in scriptures. But she, it ain't like she's less important than the other prophets or wise men, priests or heroes of scripture. Uh, but that's all I wanted to say about her. And uh, please check those scriptures out. Study them for yourself. And uh, that's all I really wanted to say right now. And uh, please give me a big thumbs up and hit that notification bell and also subscribe. I'd appreciate that very much. And I thank you again for joining me. Until we meet again, brothers and sisters, uh, peace out and shalom.